And today we're going to begin in Genesis 6 and 7 with the story of Noah. And Jesus Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man, or Jesus Christ. So why don't you stand up, and we'll read the Bible together one more time here, and then we will get into, as in the days of Noah, which I believe we are living in. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth that the sons of God, or the angels of God, saw the daughters of man, humanity, that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for indeed he is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. That was a promise. Now what's the promise in Psalms? Anyone know? 70 to 80. That's right. Very good. There were giants on the earth in those days because the angels of God slept with the daughters of men and produced an offspring with the rehabilitating or the playing with the genetic code. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came to the daughters of men, they bore children to them. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Family breakdown. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself a what? An ark. Then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark. Where was God when he told Noah this? Come into the ark. Where was God? He was in the ark. Isn't that nice? That when you go through the storms of life, God is already in the ark. Isn't that beautiful? Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are a righteous. Remember that. You are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with your seven each every clean animal. And so of all the clean animals, there were to be seven pairs, not two, Got to read carefully when you read the Bible. Seven of every clean animal, male and female, and then what? Two of each animals that are unclean. Seven clean, two unclean, a male and a female. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made, not evolution that I have made. And Noah did everything to all that the Lord commanded him, and Noah was what? Wow. You think you've got marriage problems now. <laughs> How'd you like to be married for 500 years? And it came to pass after seven days, after Noah and his family were in the ark for seven days, that the waters of the flood were on the earth in the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, the 17th day of the month. On that day, and this is where the flood came from. It didn't come from the sky. All the fountains of the what? Of the great deep broke up and created the Grand Canyon and created Smoky Mountains and the Andes, and the Sierras. It destroyed the land. And the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Now, Father, we pray as we get into this, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of your second coming. Give us ears to hear. We're going to learn a lot of things we never heard before. We already learned one. And Father, the important thing is help us to be righteous before you. Thank you, Father, that you provided safety from the coming judgment. You did for Noah in the ark, and you will for us through Jesus Christ. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. So, in the days of Noah... 
the earth was totally different from what you think you see now. And there were no four seasons in the days of Noah. The earth was not on an axis tilted. All the oceans of the earth were underneath. And there was a barrier around the whole earth that caused tropical weather from the North Pole to the South Pole. And they are still finding animals in the North Pole with tropical vegetation in their mouth frozen. That's the old earth before sin came and before God flooded the earth. So it's totally different from what we know, but we will see that original earth again. And one of the first things that happened before God judged the earth was there was a population explosion or the multiplication of man. And it says, now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they took wives for themselves. You say, now why do you call the sons of God the angels? Remember in the book of Job, it says, and the sons of God came before God's presence and Lucifer, Satan also came with them considered a son of God. And so we're going to get into this in a bit. But before we do, it's important that you understand one of the signs of the coming of Christ is the multiplication of men on the face of the earth. Now, from the day Noah stepped out of the ark to 1860, 4,000 years from the day Noah stepped out of the ark, to 1860, the earth repopulated 1 billion people. You with me? After Noah, took 4,000 years for the multiplication of men to hit 1 billion. From 1867 to 1935, 50 years, second billion. Did you know that? First billion, 4,000 years. Second billion, 50 years. The third billion was 1935 to 1960, 25 years, another billion. The fourth billion was 1965 to 1980, 4 billion people on the face of the earth. You with me? You notice 4,150, 25, and, and where are we today? Does anyone know how, where we're at? Probably about close to 8 billion. 8 billion. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now, two things happened. The first thing is after Noah, God limited mankind's lifespan to 120 years. And then in the Psalms, God limited it again to 70, if not 80 years. You with me? So if it took 4,000 years, 5,000 years to get 8 billion, and that's 120 years to 70 years. How many people do you think were on the face of the earth during Noah's time when people lived to 7, 8, 900 years old? I'm going to tell you. You won't believe it, but I'm going to tell you. Let's say that the average lifespan of a person in Noah's day was 500, and we know if you read Genesis 1 to 10, you know it was 8, 900, 900 plus. The average lifespan was 500 years. The average couple had eight children. That's pretty conservative. That's before there were Jews and Catholics. <laughs> and the average generation was 94 years, about half of us. We're, our, our generation is 40, 45. Um, when you're 40, 45, not me, you begin to see grandchildren. Not me. Can't even get mine married off. But I, I grew up with a couple girls' playmates, and they're my age, and they're married, and they have three, four, five grandchildren. Patty's younger than me, and she's got grandchildren, which I'm happy for. But you multiply 500 years old, 94 uh, years for generation, and eight children from the time of Adam and Eve to the year 1678 of Noah, there was 137 billion people upon the earth. 137 billion. And you say, how can that be, Pastor? 
How can that be? A hundred, well, because there were no oceans back then. It says there were four rivers that came out of Eden, remember? Tigris, Euphrates. And it doesn't say there wasn't any seas. How many know you can have oceans and seas are a little different? How many have heard of the Black Sea over by Russia and the Mediterranean and, you know, some of these other seas? But those aren't oceans. How many have ever seen the Great Lakes? If you first time you ever see the Great Lakes, you think, my gosh, that's an ocean. How many ever watched TV and found that they're discovering cities under the ocean? 137 billion people on the face of the earth. Very interesting. From the time of Adam to the time of Noah. But that doesn't mean there's not Aegean Sea and Black Seas and other seas. But, you say, I don't get it, Pastor. Well, you have to look at the regeneration of the new earth when time has ceased. When sin is done, the Apostle John said, Now I saw a new heaven and a what? For the first heaven and the first earth had what? And in the new earth, there were no more. Interesting. Now the word regeneration, here you get a little Bible lesson. Regeneration is only mentioned two times in the Bible, the New Testament. The first one has to do when Adam and Eve sinned, their soul, I'm sorry, their spirit died, and it was regenerated through Christ and the word of God, Titus 3, 5, and 6. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and by the renewal of the Holy Ghost. When we are born again, our spirit is regenerated back to the original state of Adam and Eve before they sin. You with me? Not only is it referred to the spirit where you are born again, it's referred to the new earth that will be regenerated to its original form where possibly there were no oceans. Now here's what gets me in our society. If there was, let's, let's, let's just say, let's say there were 50 billion people on the earth, not 137. And we are approaching 8 billion. Does it make you upset as much as it makes me that they try to brainwash our kids that we have to start population control because we're approaching 9 billion? And we better kill off some people. And we better get euthanasia going here because we can't afford to feed that many people. 137 billion before Noah. And I watch uh, Marvel... How many likes Marvel comics? And I, I, how many ever seen the one Infinity War where the sick guy named Thanos said, I can't stand to live with people starving and all the poor, so I'm going to wipe out two-thirds of, of all life in the universe. This is what they're showing your kids at the movie theater. So this guy fought all these superheroes, and he killed off two-thirds of not the earth, you, you go online and say, oh, it's only about three billion people. No, it's not. let's say it's not even the universe. Let's say it's the solar system. You know how many trillions of people he probably killed off so that he could sleep in peace having enough food and people not starving? You, are you understanding the sick concept that they are teaching your children that we can't afford to be on this planet Eight billion, nine billion. We got to unlock some laws, and we have to kill off people, or we might have to release some viruses or do something for population control. Oh my gosh, we're getting to eight billion people. Can you imagine 137 billion people on the face of the earth? Don't believe that lie. Don't believe that lie. I don't know if you have followed a little bit of the new house of representatives that has a republican majority and i'm not a republican i'm not a democrat i'm a conservative right but they just passed their first righteous legislation this past week i often pray lord let our government pass righteous legislation because they pass a lot of garbage but this is what they pass it's called the born alive abortion survivors act anyone hear of it 
that now that the Democrats don't have the majority, but the conservatives do, and that doesn't mean every Republican is a conservative, they passed an act in the United States of America that if a baby survives an abortion, you cannot leave it to die on a doctor's table like they have the last three years, that a doctor must now save that baby's life or be thrown in jail. Now, this is what you need to know. All 210 Democrats voted violence against a saved baby. Not one conservative Christian Democrat voted for this bill, as it was in the days of Noah. These are our politicians. There's a great man of God called Dietrich Bonhoeffer, probably the last martyr from Hitler. A couple weeks before the United States and, and the Allies won the war, he killed Dietrich Bonhoeffer because Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a, was a Lutheran pastor. He tried to get rid of Hitler. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, you judge a society by the way they treat their children. So if we are judged by the way we treat our children, and we have 210 people, 12 people in the White House. Our, this, is, this is your government. Don't tell me we're not in the last days. That is just sick. God help us. God have mercy on us. Well, not only in the days of Noah was there a uh, multiplication of men, but when there comes a multiplication of man, there comes a lapse of morality of man. It's, I don't know what it is. It, the Bible calls it the... Uh, an, the mystery of iniquity, where sometimes man just gets lower and lower and lower. How many know 40 years ago they were not voting on letting live babies die on a doctor's table? But now they're fighting over it in our government, our country. So what the morality of man in the times of Noah is that they began to do evil things and they began to just terrible things. The family unit broke down, there was murder, there was violence, there was wickedness. In fact, the scripture says, Then the Lord saw all the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of their heart, of their thoughts, of their heart, was only evil what? And here's the saddest thing. And the Lord was what? So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. But here's the good news. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? You see, in Noah's time, there is this thing called existential philosophy. You wouldn't know anything about it. It's called, if it feels good, do it. If they bother you, kill them. <laughs> if you don't like her, get rid of her. Get rid of them. And it kind of sounds like World War II, the Nazi, you know, survival of the fittest. And World War II where they say there's a species of people that are just nothing but bloodsuckers and leeches that are taking food from us. So we should wipe them out so we have more food and it's better. And, of course, they're the Jews. Don't need them. And we don't need, you know, the uh, mentally, intellectually impaired or what we used to call the mentally retarded. We don't need this, we don't need that, and, and uh, we are back there again today. It's the same as it was in the days of Noah. Our government, I just told you, just fought about who should live and who should not live. They don't show that on the news, do they? You know that scripture in John 8, 32, you shall watch the news and the news shall set you free. Well, in the times of Noah, everyone did what was right. There was no absolute truth. Now, let me tell you, if you don't know what absolute truth is, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, we believe in absolute truth. This is absolute truth. It doesn't change, even though we're in the 6,000 year, or getting close to 6,000 years of humanity, this has never changed once. It won't change. We base our beliefs on this. We don't base our beliefs on the culture, 
how righteous. But we are being attacked by our government now because we choose to believe in absolutes. We have a choice in this nation, according to our Constitution, uh, to choose things, but our government says, no, you don't. If you don't believe our way, we'll come after you. This is the United States of America. Back and uh, when all those liberals were in charge of the House and the Senate and the President, I don't know if you remember back in December, before the elections and every, the changeover, that they pushed through a Respect for Marriage Act. Let me remember that. How many read the Respect for Marriage Act? Anyone? Those sneaky liberals. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read something to you. You say, well, that's where they let men marry men and women marry women, lesbians and homosexuals. And, and if you're against it, you know, you are criminalized. Well, no, that's, that's not totally true. The wording in this LGBTQ agenda is like this. The Respect for Marriage Act provides statutory authority for same-sex and interracial marriages. How many knew that? These Democrats put it in there that if you go against a homosexual marriage, you're against interbreeding of races. You're a racist now. We have interracial marriages in this church. I have no problem with interracial marriages. Just make sure you marry someone in the Lord. But they put it in there, not the color of your skin, but if you choose to believe against absolute truth, where the Bible says it was Adam and Eve, two of every pair, male and female on the ark, you with me? But if you choose to go against homosexuals, uh, you are not just a hate monger, you are a racist now. Because that means you're against blacks wearing whites, whites marrying Latinos, Latinos wearing blacks, Latinos wearing white. You're against it. Did you know that? That's the morality of man. That's where we are today. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. I, I, I'm not a racist. I don't believe in homosexual marriage, but I'm not a racist. Even though they try to print that it is. So, well, you know what? You guys believe in the Bible. You guys, the Bible is outdated. Well, is it really? Psalms 119.89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is established. And do you know what that means? That means before God created humanity in Adam and Eve, there was a word of God already in heaven. It wasn't in English form printed here yet, but it was in heaven and it can be trusted. Thank you for listening to the teaching from the Word of God. My name is Paul Height. I'm the pastor of Evangelical Christian Church, located at 1325 Watertown Ave in Waterbury, Connecticut. We would love to have you join us and worship Jesus Christ this coming Sunday at 1030. Now may God bless you, and may he continue to cause you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of his Son. Jesus Christ.